Senator Bernie Sanders, who is arguably the best politician in the country, he's right up there with Elizabeth Warren and Alan Grayson, he was tweeting up a storm earlier today, and actually for the past two days, and it was just a deluge of economic facts. And listen to some of these to get an idea about the state of the country today. Since 1999, more than 60,000 U.S. factories have shut down. Do you believe that? I mean, I didn't even know that fact, and I read about this stuff day in and day out. 60,000 U.S. factories shut down since 1999. Yeah, I think that's going to have an effect on the middle class. Since 1999, we've also lost more than 5 million decent-paying manufacturing jobs. 5 million. Now, what do we have to blame for this? We have NAFTA and GATT and the WTO, and now they're working on this new one, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which is like all those old free trade deals, which is really just outsourcing. It's like they put it on steroids. So, uh, just uh, amazing to see the devastation quantified with how bad it's actually been for the American middle class and for the poor. It used to be that people, you know, when we had a middle class that was the envy of the world, we have we had high levels of unionization and we had good we had tariffs on goods and we had protectionist policies that made it so that if you're a company that wants to ship jobs overseas, well okay, guess what? You're going to be taxed for it. You should be a patriot and keep your jobs here at home and pay Americans a good wage, uh, you know, for your company and and to make your goods and do all that stuff. But we had these business owners who were so greedy, they wanted to make so much more money that they wanted to ship the jobs off to Bangladesh and Mexico. This is the result. This is the devastation that came. Also, 75% of the jobs created so far this year are part-time with little or no benefits. There's your job recovery, guys, ever since the Great Recession in 2008. 95% of the economic gains during the recovery went to the top 1% in the first three years of the recovery. I mean, that's amazing. So it's just like the bubble got reinflated by the government with the bailouts and the helping of Wall Street, and the money just was taken by the rich and put in their pocket and said, thank you, even though we're the ones that bankrupted our companies and destroyed the economic system of the country, thank you for giving us the money that, that we lost and still the rest of America is fighting for the crumbs. I mean, it's it's amazing. And then all the jobs being created are low-wage jobs, fast food jobs, part-time jobs. Now, there's a couple more facts here. Again, it just it, they're almost unbelievable. The bottom 60% of Americans owns just 2.3% of the wealth. Wow. The bottom 60% of Americans owns just 2.3% of the wealth. Now, we talked about this the other day. I'm fine with some level of income inequality. I think everybody is. Nobody wants, or very few people want everybody to make the exact same amount of money from the part-time janitor to the CEO of a mega corporation. We get it. There's going to be some variation in the amount of money people uh, make, judging by how hard they work and what kind of a job they have and how much productivity they, you know, engage in and uh, how much wealth they create. We get it. But the question is, to what extent do you want that income inequality? You know, what level is rational versus at what point do you become insane? And at what point is this a kleptocracy and it's not a democracy? And at what point is the system rigged against your average person? And at what point do we not even have equality of opportunity? Okay, it's fair to say that when the bottom 60% of Americans own just 2.3% of the wealth, yes, there's no more uh, equal opportunity. Yes, the system is rigged in favor of the rich. And finally, the middle class... Uh, Middle class families have seen their income go down by nearly $5,000 since 1999, adjusting for inflation. There's your war on the middle class right there.